Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of December 9, 2018. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. I like to think of this week as one where we are wrapping up larger cycles. And it isn't quite over yet, but I think that we are going to start to feel that the wrap up is happening. And this is really the larger cycles are Mercury and Venus. So we have this week Mercury having and hanging tight an important conversation with Uranus in the first half of the week before changing signs and towards the very end of the week, an important peak moment just before the Venus retrograde season is over, which it is very soon. So let's start with Mercury. So Mercury, all last week, you might remember I told you that Mercury and Uranus were holding tight a conversation all week as Mercury slowed down, stood still, and technically went forward, but pretty much in the same part of the sky. Well, it is going to be this week as well that we have that holding of the conversation between Mercury and Uranus. This is a type of conversation that astrologers call a quincunx, and it invites us to have to deal with things very quickly and have to step into a busy period, sometimes by surprise. However, the thing is that even if it feels great in the moment, sometimes it does, it feels like a delightful surprise. Sometimes not so much. It doesn't feel so great in the moment. The great thing is that as we get to the very end of the week, as we end this week, we do so with two big things happening. One is Venus speaking in harmony with Saturn. At this point, Venus will be in the same part of the sky that Mercury will be in the early part of the week as Mercury is having that conversation with Uranus. And so this to me is a moment of tangible rewards that come about as a result of thinking fast on your feet and being able to address whatever it is that comes up and being able to roll with it. The more you're able to roll with however it is that that particular surprise moment finds you or might have found you last week, well, it is going to be in proportion to that, that the rewards will come. But because Saturn is involved, it will be rewards that you have earned. It is going to be based on what you have demonstrated, based on the expertise that you have shown, and it will be uh, ultimately a reward that has real lasting qualities to it. The second thing that is happening is the divine meeting between Mercury and Jupiter. That's not happening this week. That will happen next week. However, as we get to the very end of the week, we will feel that energy building. And if you think back, we have had these two planets. Well, actually, it's been more like Mercury rushing to meet, going retrograde over, and now direct moving forward to meet Jupiter in the sky. And so a couple of things I did want to mention about this. We will feel this energy building as we get towards the very end of the week. This is an energy of reward based on how it is that you addressed and how it is that you rolled with this larger Mercury retrograde season that we have been in since late October. And this is also a time when you want to strive to schedule anything really important to you, especially if it has to do with communication. So where it has to do with making a phone call or connecting with someone or sharing an idea, to the best of your ability, if it is possible, even though that surprise energy in the first half of the week may not necessarily make it possible, you may have to present more quickly than you thought, However, if you have an option, if you have a choice, then I would encourage you to wait until the very end of this week or more ideally early next week, because that is when you'll really be working with an energy that allows you to take whatever it is that you ask for and magnify it that much more. But also the thing with Jupiter is, you know, Jupiter, yes, it's been thought of and articulated as the great bestower. And it is a benefit. It is a blessing energy. The thing to remember, though, is that sometimes our blessings come in disguise. So for the most part, and most people are going to feel this as a time of heightened optimism, as a time of being able to recognize more and more opportunity and getting that affirmation as we get to the very end of this week. However, at the same time, there have been moments, there are times when part of what allows greater blessings to come in actually involves 
uh, closures to take place, healthy closures to take place. And that sense of a healthy closure type of energy is going to be uh, that much more dominant for the fire sign. So if you are an Aries, a Leo, or a Sag, then chances are part of what unleashes the great blessings for you is going to be in some way connected to what it is that comes to an end. And think back to those times in your life when there was something uh, that a chapter closed or there was something that left your life and you felt really grateful. Like, thank goodness that situation is over. Thank goodness I don't have to deal with that anymore. So that may be part of how this energy is realized. Now, if you are an earth sign, chances are you are feeling this energy more in terms of the closure being promised, those grateful closures, right? But if you are uh, someone who is a water sign, then some of this energy may be playing out more in terms of what is happening on a work or career uh, level. For those of you who are air signs, this is a lot more social. It has to do with the people in your life. And if you are a fire sign, then you are tapping into the really optimistic best part of this energy. So everybody is going to be feeling this sense of blessings, magnifying, as we get to the end of the week, but it will really start to peak once we enter next week. So again, plan for anything big, if you can, at the very end of this week and into next. As a collective, this can bring a lot of healing news and energy of understanding between different types of people. Now, whether this is sort of a like a person who steps forward as an icon of sorts who embodies this or whether it is uh, more that we're seeing it play out in terms of politics this can be a time when we feel more hopeful and are reminded of how alike we actually are and of our inherent uh, similarities and of our inherent integration so this can be some very encouraging news on the front that has to do with knowing how it is that we can actually be there for each other regardless of things like borders or nationalities or ethnicity so that is something to watch for uh, that we will be talking about as a collective at the very end of this week and into next now of course we've got to talk about love and venus now this isn't only going to be experienced in the context of love we have a peak moment just before venus leaves shadow but i do think as we get to the very end of this week a lot of us are going to start to feel like venus retrograde season really is either over or about to be over like it will be a visceral emotion that a lot of people are going to be feeling it's not just about love, right? This is Venus. She also has to do with self-worth and self-esteem. She has to do with things like money and possessions and beauty and what you consider your unique beauty and how it is that you will uniquely express that in the world. We all have a Venus in our chart, every single one of us. When you look at the astrology chart, it is not just the sun. It's not just your sun sign, but you have the entire universe within you at all times. Times. we all have a Venus we all have a part of us that wants to connect with an energy that we consider one of pleasure and fun and beauty and ease and we all have our own unique way of expressing that and whatever Venus is doing at any given time it in some way will always remind you of or encourage you to tap into your own what's called your natal Venus so your own birth Venus and so all of us in our own individual journeys have been on a journey towards uncovering these themes for ourselves of love and beauty and ease and pleasure and self-worth and money and understanding the role that possessions are going to play in our life what's worth it and what isn't worth it and what it is that really matters what is the essence of beauty for us and how are we going to own that how are we going to claim that and live that truth well, a lot of us have been having a lot of surprise moments as part of this understanding. And that is because as part of this larger Venus retrograde season that we have been in since early September, Venus has been dancing with Uranus, standing across the sky from Uranus. So some people have had, and a lot of people have had, certain realizations or surprises or, you know, just all of a sudden having to consider these areas very quickly or getting a whole new perspective, if not 
an epiphany. Well, it is now as Venus connects with Saturn in harmony for the third and final time. The last times that she did this was mid-September and in late October. Well, this is the third and final time just before she officially leaves shadow, just before the Venus retrograde season officially comes to an end. And it is going to be now that we make a choice. We make a decision. We understand our long-term future more clearly. We understand the direction that we truly want to go. But more importantly, I think of Saturn as taking responsibility for our happiness. That really is it. That's really what it comes down to. Acknowledging and honoring what it is that we need to be at peace with ourselves and then following through with action. And the thing is that that answer is different for everybody. Uh, some people, in order to be happy, in order to be at peace with themselves, they need to have a sense of responsibility to others. That's beautiful. Others need to have a sense of responsibility to an organization or to a higher cause or to a higher principle. Uh, others, it tends to be different, a responsibility to ourselves. But what happens more often is that it's a little bit of different things. It's not just one thing. It isn't that you just do one thing and you will be at peace with yourself, but it tends to be that there are different areas where we get to express our Saturn. And in expressing our Saturn, we find that sense of inner stability. And it is through inner stability that inner peace is found and that is available to all of us. And so I do think that with Saturn having to do with owning your own happiness, owning your right to be at peace with yourself and to follow that through with action, to honor that with action. Well, this is where that self-love part and the action part, the part of you that is going to commit to the process, commit to the journey of owning your happiness. Well, that will become that much more clearer as we get to the very end of the week. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, this is tangible rewards. It is Venus that is also considered a benefit along with Jupiter. In fact, it has been Jupiter that has been articulated as the higher benefic and Venus as the lower benefic. So her blessings aren't always as big as Jupiter, but it is an energy of blessing nonetheless. Connecting with Saturn. So this is about tangible blessings, blessings that change your life in practical ways and help you to feel more grounded and help you to feel like you are moving towards a future that you like. And so this can show up in just about any area of life. A lot depends on your sun sign, your moon sign, your rising sign, your unique chart is going to show you where it is that some of these tangible blessings may show up. But certainly the more it is that we are willing to be honest with ourselves, the more it is that we are willing to dig deep within ourselves and, and face our own personal truth the more it is that we will uncover that energy of beauty and love within us. And the more it is that we'll be able to honor it with our own tangible actions to move us in that direction. But of course, there are a lot of people out there who have experienced this Venus retrograde season in the context of romantic love as well. And I'm seeing this as decision time for a lot of people out there. Some people, I would say a few people have been on a little bit of a love related journey over the course of this Venus retrograde season. That's the point of Venus retrograde season to show you and help you to uncover some truth about where you are in love and why and how you feel about it. And what do you really love? Do I love it is the guiding question of Venus retrograde season. Well, that truth has already been revealed through the course of Venus standing across from Uranus. However, it is now that we take action in support of the truth that we now understand. And the great thing is, is that this moves us in a direction of greater love. Yes, this energy can show up in all kinds of areas of life, but in romantic love as well. This moves us towards a love that is real, that is tangible, that is proven. And it moves us towards a love that we actually can apply in ways that make our life better and that make us better. A love that allows us to be more clear about what it is that we need to be at peace with ourselves. We don't give away that ownership. We don't say that you are responsible for someone else being responsible for your inner peace, for your inner happiness. That will never work. 
However, there are times when we connect with people who show us our own tools, who help us to see ourselves differently. And in connecting with our own inner tools, we're able to better take responsibility for that happiness. That Saturn promises, yes, but Venus as well. Venus reminds us that life is not always meant to be something that feels uh, like an obligation, but rather life is meant to be lived. Life is meant to be enjoyed and to enjoy our incarnation fully and whatever that means for you. That is part of our sacred journey in this lifetime. Now, how is that going to look like for you in practical ways? Well, thankfully, Saturn will help us not only to uncover, but to actually live it. What I love about this week for us, well, look, there's a lot to love here, but did I mention in the middle of the week that Mercury does change signs? Mercury does move into the sign of Sagittarius as part of starting to move towards Jupiter. And it is this move into the sign of Sagittarius that I think is going to allow a lot more of us to feel more philosophical and to approach our lives with a greater sense of belief that great things can happen, that great turnarounds can happen, and that great opportunities can find us. It is, in part, that very belief that will fuel the conversations, that will fuel the synchronistic moments that can make it so. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'm so grateful for it. What are you excited about this week? What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I absolutely love reading you guys. You can know what all this wonderful stuff means for you in your sign by logging on to nadiashaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and so much more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. I have events coming up that I'm really excited about. Online event with CIA I will be doing on December 28th. Check out the link below. It is going to be this online event that's going to be looking at the nodes and astrology part of the time we're going to be looking at uh, your birth nodes the nodes of the moon but we're going to spend a good amount of time also looking at what is coming up in 2019 it's a great time to look ahead at 2019 and to consider how the north node being newly in the sign of cancer and will be in the sign of cancer all of 2019 and into 2020 actually what is that going to mean for us as a collective well i will be talking about that as well i really look forward to connecting with you all there and again you can register in the link below and i've got in-person events that i'm really excited about i am in mexico city right now you might notice it looks a little bit different in the background the lighting is a little weird i apologize for that but um yes basically i'm in mexico city just for a couple of days and uh i was walking today in the city i love this city it must be one of my absolute favorite cities in the world. And I was walking and I was thinking about, oh my God, I'm going to be in Las Vegas soon and I'm going to be speaking about astrology and I'm so excited about it. Well, I will be speaking in Las Vegas, hosted by the NCGR Las Vegas Stargazers Club. And they're hosting a talk by me called Karma and Love. So this is going to be really interesting. It's going to be really fun to talk about. We're going to be talking about those karmic connections that we make with other people. There's a lot to talk about. It'll be lively. It'll be fun. Uh, and it'll go quick and it'll be jam-packed with info as well. And so I really am looking forward to hugging friends and fans in Las Vegas on the 29th of January. So you can check out the link below for more information. And then I'm going to rush back to Mexico and I will be speaking in Mexico as a special guest on February 2nd as part of a week-long retreat hosted by Maurice Fernandez, renowned evolutionary astrologer. And I'm really looking forward to sharing Mexico with the participants there and again talking about the nodes so we will be talking a lot about setting a spiritual intention for not only for this year but also for an understanding of what it is that is going to help us to honor uh, a higher intention for this lifetime and it's going to be a lot of fun and it's an amazing program so I hope that you check that out and just a little bit of a heads up in May, I will be in Seattle 
and in Vancouver and in well, it's Labor Day weekend. It's like late August into early September. I will be in Baltimore. So I'm looking forward to connecting with friends and fans in real time. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for this moment with you. I'm truly so grateful for it. I'm really grateful I could share a little bit of Mexico City with you. As I said, I absolutely love it here. Uh, and so it's just such a pleasure uh, to be a guest in this city. And I thank you for sharing this experience with me. And thank you for sharing your sacred journey with me. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.